Welcome, everyone, to the Badass Ladies Club. My name's Laurie. I'm here with my friend Jessica. Hey, guys. And Charlotte. Hey. And we're so excited to see you today. Just like always, we want you to jump on and subscribe. Go check out www.badassladiesclub.com. See us on all the socials. Send your favorite episode to a friend of yours that you think may need it. Um, help us spread the word out there. We would appreciate it so very much. I am so excited that you guys get to hang out with Charlotte for a little while today. She yeah. has been, she's actually a new friend of mine, and we have straight hit it off as far as just awesome things that we're into and our outlook on beauty and creating art together, which we're going to get into. But before we do that, we have a really awesome artist that we're calling out this week as Badass of the Week. This week's Badass of the Week is Jeffrey Scott. Um... Anyone who's probably in the Aveda network, probably even outside the Aveda network, totally. honestly, probably knows who Jeffrey Scott is in the beauty industry. He is the owner and founder of JSCO Hair Color Education. He's a brilliant color artist living in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, he has a gift for sharing knowledge and inspiring artists of all levels to find their creativity with hair color. But like all badasses, um, we love him for his passion of dark new wave music, cold black hearts. Yep. This is why he and I are soulmates <laughs> and humor that cannot be rivaled. Um, he, Jeffrey's just damn funny is what. Like. He really is. <laughs> like my Facebook break that I took this mm -hmm. summer. What was one of the first things I said to you? You're, You're going to have to send me all of Jeffrey Scott's I need memes. Jeffrey Scott's <laughs> posts. And you didn't miss anything on Facebook, but occasionally you'd be like, I miss Jeffrey. Like, <laughs> I, I miss all his memes. He's so um, good. Literally, that was the thing that was most upsetting when I took my hiatus from Facebook this summer. Um, but when I got back on, I was like, he's here. <laughs> um, he has a genuine love and presence about him that cannot be ignored. And we are so excited to invite him on the podcast. So... Jeffrey Scott, I'm going to be reaching out to you and we're going to get you on here because we want to talk to you and the um, world needs more. Of the world needs Jeffrey more too. Jeffrey Scott yeah. because you're so yeah. funny, so, so funny. And, um, I feel a soul connection with him for sure. Real heart. And honestly, like Jeffrey's taste in music and my taste in music are like this. Okay. <laughs> I, think that it was one of the first things we really connected on were all of the geeky photos that we had of ourselves at like dark goth wave clubs nice. back in the 90s nice. it's so good um so yeah jeffrey badass box is on the way can't wait to have you on the show let's talk about charlotte a little bit yay charlotte hey. so i've mentioned charlotte on the podcast a couple of times already because we've talked a lot about my mostly naked pictures that i took with you <laughs> which were so high i they mean were. charlotte you did a great job uh, they were amazing and i have to tell you it's because you can tell you're liberated like I mean, you <laughs> love who you are and you love your body and you uh it doesn't matter what other people think and that i can always tell within the first five minutes of shooting so for me as an artist was super exciting because instead of having to put a lot of your things to rest to help you kind of whatever you were already there you were already ready to go and you knew what you wanted and you rocked it well it was way more fun than I expected Good. like I knew that taking photos it was not something I love doing normally most people don't um but in that I was doing the photos in my home I think helped a lot you know comfort, like I was in yeah. my comfort zone and that was good um, we've already talked about, you know, like I know about styling and yes. uh, I knew what outfits I wanted and I knew what I want my hair to be like and all that business. And you knew your body. I did. I knew angles it, and all that. All of it. But it doesn't change the fact that when you like drop naked in front of somebody and they've got a camera and lighting out on it's you that weird. you're like, whoa, <laughs> it, okay, it's this a is lot. a little bit it's much. A lot. Um, it, it's something a lot of people want and they're not courageous enough to go get, but it's liberating once you have it. Right. It's also crazy insane how much I loved the pictures. Like, Good. I knew that I would, I, I knew that my husband would like them. Right, That's why right, I took right. them, you know. Um, Obviously. Uh, yeah. But I didn't expect for me to feel so good when oh. I looked at them. Good. And so it really created this whole idea of 
like every woman should do this. Yes. Every woman should feel Amen. how yes. amazing it feels to have beautiful, they don't be totally nude. You know, like I was topless right. in a lot of mine. You don't but have to be. No, but they can a lot be of, almost as liberating without nudity. Totally they can. And it's just, I will always treasure looking back God. when I was 42 years old and Dude. did this hot, sexy yeah. shoot. And I'll do it again. I'm next. I'm yes. Yes. Please. Yes. You would kill it. I just saw your boots out in the hallway. <laughs> I'm excited for Those that. will be used. Those for need sure. to be used. Just in general, they're amazing. Thank I want to go put them on. So long story longer. I shoot with Charlotte because we have mutual Facebook friends and I saw that that's what you do. And then I started following you and realized very quickly that you have a, you do something to people when you're behind that camera where you give them permission to just be, be who they are and that no matter who that is, it is beautiful Absolutely. and valid and so important. And I see that in the images that you put together. And so it was a no non question for me. Like Charlotte has got to be on the podcast. We have yes. got to talk about I, what you do for people when you're back there behind that camera. I do have people come to me and they say, um, I could only do this with you. Yeah. And they don't even know me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such an honor to let me into your space. I think a lot of it's because I return their vulnerability. Um, I post pictures of myself that way. I think it's important for a lot of photographers um, who do specialize in boudoir to make sure that what you're asking of your clients, that you're willing to return and vulnerability. And uh, if you're asking them to do all these types of things that you would never do for one reason or the other, then you need to reconsider which type of photography you need to be in. I totally yeah. feel that from you. Well, Full disclosure, today is the first time Charlotte and I have met in person. Yes. We've been social media friends for a while. We did a FaceTime call together in preparation for this. But yes, the minute I became Facebook friends with Charlotte, it was an immediate like, I see what this chick is about. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about it. And I'm here for it. And I'm going to celebrate it. Yes. And when I see Charlotte posting her own boudoir style videos and pictures in that vulnerability I'm like shit this girl's like cool as hell and yeah. I'd get naked in front of you Absolutely. Yes. so <laughs> let's do I, this I love to tell people when they see my photos and they compliment me I'm like you're, you're so sweet you're so kind um but I'm just like a 30 something year old mom of three kids and mm -hmm. you can do it too yeah. yeah um and I think that that's really important um I use myself as an example because I've had a lot of women and especially women but everybody who um, isn't comfortable or could never. And I'm like, but look, I am also like, I am not perfect. Like, let's not even start talking about that. Like, but you see something, you enjoyed it. Um, why couldn't you do it too? Why? Like, what is it about being in front of the camera that, that makes it to where you don't feel worthy enough? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, my, yeah. which is a whole conversation. Which it really is. is. We yes. can get into. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I guess the other things, because you know, photography is one piece of what you do it it doesn't seem like it's it isn't as big as it seems like it's right. so many other aspects but you are mad creative okay like yes the way that you some of your projects that you do for creative sake instead of like <laughs> monetary sake you know like some things make you money but some things feed your creativity yes. and we get that in the hair and makeup business yes. you know like sometimes yeah. you do something because you someone's paying idea. you and sometimes you're just excited about doing something yes. and so you do it so you create these vibes sometimes with these creative shoots that you do with your friends, you yep. know, and you guys get dressed up insane and yep. go out and just play. Yep. We have creative freedom. We have, we oh both know, we know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's liberating to me. And, um, I know that a lot of women are like, Oh, I had that boudoir photography, you know, session with you. It made me feel so good. I want to do it again. And I'm like, it can be addicting to mm -hmm. be able, and it's not about vanity. It's about creativity and it's about like embracing what you have. Cause is, is much fun and amazing as those images can look. You don't know what's going on in someone's head. Like I've already critiqued myself 50 times. Don't worry. Um, and you do have to have a lot of bravery to continue to do it but that's a big part of what makes it easier yeah. like you you're like well I've already done it once and I could I mean I edit a lot of my own photos and if anyone's aware of every angle of their body it's me I get to see it yeah. um, <laughs> I get to go through and make sure that I find the best of the best to give you to your gallery but I do get to see all these other things too and they're all completely normal yeah. um, and I think a lot of people see an image of themselves and, and they think oh my gosh this is what's wrong it's the first thing that their brain tells them is to think about what could possibly 
completely wrong with them in this photo. And a lot of that's just insecurity because you're trying to make sure that other people can't say those things first. You're trying to cover your bases emotionally. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's so liberating once you just let go and you keep doing it, practice, 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 like being in front of the camera, especially photographers, um, like it's part of that vulnerability thing. Stop asking for something that you're not willing to give. One thing that you did when we were shooting is when you would see some, when I would make a face or I would hit a pose or I would do something that was good, you would like yes. cheer me on. Yes, yes. Oh you know, gosh, and like yell yes. at me from the camera. And when you would do that, like something would switch yes. in my brain and I'd be like, oh yes. yeah, this is good. Okay, we're going like, to keep doing It's just this. like when you go to the drag shows and you see them going and you're like, yeah, yes. you can't even help it. You're just like, oh my gosh, this is everything. And I actually take a lot of film clips during my sessions and I have to go and process those and I can hear myself. So I'm all like, shut up, shut because <laughs> I hate hearing myself but it really is cool because um I'm like I can hear myself encouraging them and it's an automatic thing um I struggle sometimes with making sure that they're on the right track verbally like I I don't I'm sometimes I'm concentrating it's a lot of balancing and I'm really enjoying something and I'm saying nothing mm -hmm. but sometimes it just slaps it just will hit <laughs> well, I'm like worked. oh my gosh look at you I can't with this this is so good keep doing that don't move do this do that it's just it's so good and when you hear that that reinforcement from someone else especially if you don't really know them like yeah you expect your photographer to be encouraging hopefully they are I've had experiences where it wasn't I've had experiences that were like I would never I don't I, I had an experience at one point with boudoir photography 10 years ago where I never want anyone I have in front of me to feel the way I did mm -hmm. and so I work really hard but also it's supernatural to me like you're killing it you you just are and it doesn't matter what size or shape or whatever you are like I it just is it's good and I'm gonna go yes <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I am always wonder is you have been on your own journey to loving yourself you know yes. and that coming out in images of you obviously because on your social media pages you do a lot of like before and afters not having nothing to do with like you know, sometimes before and afters mm -hmm. are weight related yeah yours are like look at me when I didn't love myself the growth. and look mm -hmm. at me now yes. that I do love myself I, th I think that's important oh um God. because if you're if you're in the same place you were 10 years ago what what have you been doing? Like, and it has nothing to do with looks. Um, it was probably four years ago where I started to kind of uh, do things differently. I started to kind of be like, well, why not this? And I started to become more comfortable with it. And a lot of it was because I started to photograph a lot of people. Um, I started my business five years ago. And then, you know, a year into it, I started learning a lot. Um, I also learned that no matter who's in front of my camera, they have a body issue. Um, no matter how perfect they look, whatever mm -hmm. that means. Um, and so I got to spend a lot of time, you know, with dealing with their unworthiness feelings and not being able to actually give anything back to them or make them feel better because I had those problems. And so I wanted to, I just, I kind of forced myself. And if and about four years ago, my Facebook memories, it came up this week and it was just like, this is a brave post. And I wrote all these things with some images that I had taken that were some of the first ones I had ever kind of like, because I hid from the camera for most of my life. I've always been a big girl. So it was a big deal for me to put my vulnerabilities out there, knowing that people could say some really horrible things. Um, and most, and everybody was kind. And like, I mean, I have that issue now. People are like, I don't really want my images shared. And it's like, do you know how many people would say nice things to you? Yeah. yeah. Um, like, and, and that's okay. And I respect that. However, you're really like not doing yourself as good of a service when you're not able to feel comfortable enough to be able to do things and share things and not necessarily boudoir. Well, yourself, but also everyone else, because like, yes, I feel like you should do things for yourself. You shouldn't do things because like for other people but I think that watching someone own themselves oh, fully yes. is really inspiring and it's not instantaneous it's a lot of brain work it's a lot of um reading and trying to figure out why I feel the way I do about myself is it something that someone said to me is it some is it shame that I've carried from childhood is it a, is it one instance that happened and it was super mortifying to you like what is it that get, keeps you from feeling like you can move on from that. Um, once you can start to pinpoint those inner thoughts and those heart type things, then you're going to get a lot more answers. But really the bravery is the biggest aspect. Mm -hmm. You can't be liberated if you're not brave enough to do something. Yeah. And uh, I just, 
I want everyone to be liberated. That's all so I want. <laughs> I want every person to feel the way I have felt. Have you read Untamed by Glennon Doyle? I haven't. Okay, God. Charlotte, I'm about to make you read a book. You Please. Must. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a book right now by Terry Ledgerwood. I sent it to yes. you. And oh my gosh, it's called The Geode Theory. And it I haven't gotten mine yet. Uh, I ordered it, but I haven't I just it. got it. I wanted to read it before I like finish it. I'm halfway through it. Um, the person that wrote it, Terry, she is a body image and like photographer like myself. She's actually Canadian. Um, and the geode theory that she wrote is, um, is talking about how you see a geode and they're kind of dirty and they're kind of blah and they don't look like much, but what happens when you go under pressure and you start easily chipping away at the outside, eventually you open it up and it's sparkly and that's your sparkle. Show the world your sparkle. Um, a lot of people make it to where you don't have access to it or you don't feel like you're good enough to even figure out where that, where the middle of it is. Like, and you don't maybe even know that it exists. Anytime you pick up a rock, it could be a geode or it could be just a rock. But I believe everyone is a geode and they just haven't tapped into their sparkle yet. Mm -hmm. And she does a lot of brain work and a lot of heart work in that book where she is trying to get you to understand a lot of different things and it's super good brain food for people who are struggling with their body and body image isn't always being big um, a lot of people um, struggle with being too small mm -hmm. um, and I I went through a divorce where I lost 75 pounds in four months and people called me emaciated like I know what it's like to be called this and be called that and they're on polar opposite ends um, so what I've learned is people are always going to have something to say. It doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do or what I look like. Someone's going to have something to say. And I'm not here to please other people. I'm here to make myself happy and to live my life to the fullest. So it's really good to be able to get that brain food in. And I will read that. I'm s like any more brain food I can have. Like I want to be able to soak up all that information to be able to give back out because not everyone's going to read a book, but sometimes something I say can be profound yeah. and I have to be aware of that gift and it's important. Yeah, I'm totally excited to read the geode theory theory. I can't wait till my copy gets here. Yeah. So after you read the geode theory, <laughs> I'm going to read the geode we'll theory, switch. but you have to read yes. untamed. Yeah. So yes. I am club. definitely an untamed woman. So the oh, title's right. already got me. <laughs> we talked a lot about books and different things that you fed your brain and I think it's so relevant to talk about like sometimes you feed your brain intentionally by reading a book or yes. hearing a podcast or something but sometimes you're unintentionally feeding your brain things that are yes. not good for it also yeah. and yes. that we have to be vigilant about making sure that we put twice as much good stuff in as the bad stuff my, that seeps in. My you know? mom always said garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> and yes. she's right. And a lot of it is sometimes, unfortunately, the garbage that we're constantly getting in our brains and hearts is um, from people that we love. And that's the hardest one. Um, I, I I definitely feel that. Like, I have a lot of slack that comes from people, and some of them are family. And I just... I've decided that it doesn't matter. It's like, I'm going to own who I am because I get to help other people and inspire other people. And like, why would I deny myself the ability to change other people's lives? And, um, that's more important to me than anybody else's opinions of what I do. Cause I mean, if, if you're doing the same thing, everybody else's does that's in the same box, like that doesn't help anyone. Everybody's already doing that. Be yourself. Like I hashtag that all the time. Be yourself. Be you. Like that is the most important thing. And I, it has a lot to do with your body and how you feel about yourself. And like, can you sit there and look at anybody in the eyes and feel comfortable saying something to them? Like mm -hmm. it's vulnerability is a superpower harness it but it's really hard to harness it if you don't get up and do something like do something that scares you be brave one of the first things that was hard for me um i had never worn shorts in public until about two years ago and i've like i said i've always been pretty big girl um and i like i have all sorts of things wrong with me okay according to everybody mm -hmm. um in the world that i just are um and things that i've been told were, were issues and so i just it was a really brave moment for me to walk out of the house and wear shorts and i like and i still wanted to cover myself with my purse and i still wanted to do this and it takes a lot of those things to become comfortable Mm -hmm. Um, and I have had people, I left a restaurant one time in shorts and this girl from across the way goes, Oh my God, because I was wearing shorts and it was not acceptable in her brain, which 
was hard for me because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm back in high school and somebody's making fun of my body. And I thought to myself, I can go home and take off my shorts and never put them on again. Or I can let that, you know, fuel my fire. And my fire is like being okay with myself and being an example. Like when we were on the street and that chick was and like, she oh my stopped gosh. us. Yes. She was like, oh my gosh, that stuff happens a lot. And I think it's just, it has nothing to do with me. It's just that sometimes people, especially women will see me and they're like, wow, you're embodying everything I wish I could without even knowing that's what they mean. And I'm always like, oh, thank you. Like, thank you. That makes my heart full because you can do it too. Like you can be you too, unapologetically, like be you and not worry about the rest of it. You know, I get complimented on my clothing style and fashion sense all the time. Like I'm wearing the faux fur cheetah print, you know, (laughs) jackets with the five inch spiked yes, Jeffrey the Campbell shoes, shoes that you out <laughs> see out in the hallway over yes. there um, with like the big cat eyeliner yes. and I get stopped and people are like, wow, you know, wow. Yes. Oh my gosh. I wish I could. And I'm but like, you can. but you can. Yes, and I love giving women permission to yes. just be like, and they're like, how do you do it? I'm like, you put it on. Yeah. I had like, a message. That's all. I had a message this week from someone. She said, you don't know me, but um, you're, you inspired me to do X, Y, and Z. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. Like, and I don't know you and we've never talked. So that means she just saw something that made her go, oh, I can do that. And if that is what, that's all I want, like yeah. out of, I, more than anything else, that's what I want. That is the point. And so if someone who is not her or someone like her sees something that they don't agree with, I'm all like, that's fine. Move along because I'm not here for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to be me. And who I am is going to liberate other people. And that's my point. And if you like, that's a whole other situation. So take it or leave it, bitch. Yes. Well, <laughs> and what I think is so interesting about people who like stop you and are like, oh my gosh, you look amazing. Like that they don't always realize that you didn't come by that no. in a blink of an eye. No, oh, God, that has no. been it takes years, years of work. To to yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have a hard time with that too, because I, a lot of people say that that's the number one question I get. How are you so confident? Which yeah. I know for a lot of people, me being confident is tied to my weight. They assume that because I'm a bigger person that, um, a fat body shouldn't be allowed to wear X, Y, and Z. And so, because I do, I'm confident and I, I wish I could just sit there and explain like in the most simplest way, that's not possible, how long it took for me to feel this way. And the, um, confidence isn't just a fat body, skinny body thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a person thing. And like, who are you? Are you happy with who you are? Like, and it comes from the depths of your soul and, um, every interaction you have with someone can build that up or build that, take that down. And so, but the more you're sure of yourself and who you are, what you believe in, what's important to you, how you carry yourself, how you communicate, how you treat others is really going to be where it starts. Being able to be confident in who you are, can you can dress this however you want. What does your heart look like? So, you know, I love to dress up. I love to change clothes. I love to look like 15 different people. There's days that I look like an old mom that crawled out of a hole. And there's <laughs> days where I look like I've had people at HEB of all places go, are you famous? Yeah. And I'm like, it, no, it's just not the yet. Eye, I just tell them it's just the it's eyelashes. Okay. <laughs> like, and they're five dollars at Target and you can rewear them. And it's so simple. And I just like I I just want people who see that to have that permission yeah. and if it's me who gives it to them even better like let me be your cheerleader I always say do you have an Instagram let me follow you and I want to hype you up and I want like everyone deserves that and I mean it like if I don't like something I won't say anything <laughs> so if I'm hyping you I'm telling you the truth yeah. and uh, it's it's nice to have someone who can be vulnerable with themselves and, and, and showcase who they are body mind soul but also to give that encouragement to somebody else like how like how many people will it liberate because once that person has has you know help that part of themselves because it's a it's a constant thing it's a constant struggle I'm not always nice to myself um but like once you have that it's it's a gift and it's a gift to not only yourself but your relationships and your children like I'm a mom and and I'm raising two daughters and we have a lot of discussions about clothes and what we look like and all these types of things that can make or break. And, you know, and a lot, I don't want them to have to heal from trauma. I don't want them to, people are going to say stuff and I can't control that, but how do we deal with it? 
How do we, how do we navigate this? And that's a lot of inner dialogue work you have to do, or you're going to be miserable because one person will say one weird thing to you and you're going to be back to the like, bottom, mm-hmm. effed up for yes. the rest of your oh, life. Yes. Yes. So it like, for me, it just goes back to being the person I needed to be that I needed when I was younger. Yes. Um, and I don't hold anybody responsible for that. I was raised in an incredibly loving, amazing home. Like my parents are the best. It's just that I dealt with a lot of trauma with the way I looked with my port wine stains and all that, that like people, are you mean. know, like <laughs> they are mean, really but mean. like yeah. that it, when parents, when your parents say nice things about you, it's like, well, you're my yeah, mom. My mom. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah. like, Thanks, mom. Thanks, Thanks but mom. I don't believe you. Like, but right. I don't yeah, believe count. you. So I love this idea of giving people permission to be their beautiful selves because I wish I had more of that when I was Me too. Younger. I, I think a lot about how different I would be and or more progressed into where I want to be if I had had that type of support. Um, and that's something I, w- I want to give to my children. And when you fix all these things with yourself and you work on them daily and you're constantly giving yourself more brain food to be better, to, like if somebody says something whack to you, then what are we going to do today to, to counteract that? Yeah. Um, because is it true? Is it not true? It doesn't matter. Like it, it was unnecessary. And people say stuff all the time out of their ass. So how do we make sure that we are so confident in ourselves that no one's going to be able to change your mind? And, um, one of my favorite quotes is, um, you teach people how to treat you. Yes. And that's a big part of it and being able to own that. Um, and it has nothing to do with how you look, No. but I do know when I look a certain way, people treat me differently. Mm -hmm. And when I'm a certain weight, they treat me differently and it fluctuates and it does all these different things. And I can look like this one day and this another day. And then depending on who or where, or what, how I'm going about my day, I could be offered a free something and I'm like, huh, I'm mad for the old bodied me who wasn't in this brain because I would have been like, oh my gosh, somebody likes me. Whereas now I'm like, oh, it's because I look good and you're treating me special. And I don't know how I feel about that. Cause if I look different, you wouldn't be treating me this way. Probably. You know, um, we just had a conversation with my friend, Julie. She was on the podcast, um, a few weeks ago and um her episode was all about body positivity she's a plus size public figure I saw some of those. and i don't think we talked about it on her episode laurie but remember when we were talking to her before and she said that like she almost has to make a conscious effort to look extra cute yes because plus size girls if you go out like not with your makeup on and dressed up, you're automatically thought of as lazy or you're sick or yeah, you know, like, something yes. wrong. Like, There's yeah. something wrong there. Right. Um, whereas like straight sized people don't really get that as much right. that plus size girls get that more. But straight sized people can go out in a hoodie with no makeup and a top knot and everybody's and like, Oh, it's so their day cute. off. It's fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yeah. if you're plus size and you go out and you're, you're in sweats you and you're, showered, yeah, like ew, that you just must you be smell. lazy and you don't <laughs> yeah. love yourself and Whatever. you didn't. Yeah. Like it's yes. ridiculous. And it's hard. It's hard for a lot of people to, to be able to, to do that. And you know, being confident in who you are is really going to give you the balls to go out and do and wear whatever you feel like to well, because even if you're not done up hair, makeup, wardrobe, all this stuff, and you are confident, people see that. Yes. They see mm-hmm. it. So it doesn't matter what's happening right. out here. When you feel that, it comes out of you, you know, yeah. like no matter what's going on. Yeah. And I'm constantly going to places and being like, everybody's brain here is so different. Nobody thinks the way I do. And I'm sure they're thinking all of these things about me, especially when I'm dressed some special weird way, if I'm going somewhere strange. Um, or to a photo shoot, I will be going into the gas station wearing exactly what I was, which was pasties. No, and you like, did not. Oh, I you did do- not. Charlotte, I love you so much I'll more than I this. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, look or don't look, I need some, I need gas. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For those of you, I, I need you all to envision <laughs> this. It, I probably because have photos somewhere. I ha- don't take them in there, but I really will march okay, my Okay. So you to the had a cage I, bra on. I did right? have a, bl- I had a pink cage bra on. Somebody, I sent a picture on the way home to somebody and they're like, you just drive like that. And I'm like, what are they going to do? I'm covered. <laughs> like if I get pulled over, I'll be like, hi With officer. Pasties. I, With pasties. And this was in the winter and this, like it was last month. I did an angel photo shoot and I was wearing, and I had ripped holes in the, in the fishnets. Fish yeah, yeah. The fishnets doing all. It, yeah. So I just, I was like, I need something. I'm going in here. This is what I have to wear. 
um, and I don't feel like changing, and they can look or they can go away. I've never had anybody complain, but they do look at me super strange, and I'm like, this is what this is how it is <laughs> like I've ha- but you know that's one of those things that didn't just happen overnight right, like yeah I went to all sorts of different types of events and I like I worked with PY1 last uh this time last year and I had dressed myself that I had made an I had made candy off of Amazon <laughs> when I dressed up as candy and they were like please come to our shows and work for us like please be here just to like take pictures with people I had mm-hmm. created this persona based on the theme of their night and I rocked it so hard they were like please come back and be part of this well and that's, that's what awesome. I mean about your creativity yes, like you are so afraid. good Do it. <laughs> yeah I just and I'm like okay I just need an idea and I love to build things that are unique to each client and each you know situation just because why not like everybody's yeah. already doing everything already the same so let's let's be you what like what photo fantasy do you have in your head like let's bring it to life I and I mean logistically I'm here to plot that because a lot of people they have an idea but they can't really envision it they don't know how to execute it and it's been my practice and my just my willpower wanting to do something that is you know what made it successful like a year ago I photographed an engagement session and they both wore horse heads I love it. I put lashes on the horse head. I ordered it off of Amazon and it says I didn't say nay because they're engaged. And I mean, I also had a session go like viral. It was the rainbow baby situation where I had a friend who had lost a baby at 27 weeks. And I, I, that's a big part of what I do with my photography. My heart and soul lives in it. And I, I can give you that. I can't bring your baby back. I can't fix that. I wish I could. I I have all these feelings about it, but what can we do now to celebrate? How can we move forward? How can we make the imagery healing for you, but fun and exciting experience that's aesthetically pleasing? And um, that was something that I had plotted from the beginning. I just had an idea. It went viral. I was like, oh my gosh. And so it taught me that like, if you go out on a limb and you try something, it can be successful, even if it's not prescribed or even if it's not what someone thinks it should be. And that's exactly what photography and art should be about yeah. is finding that that weird, like love the weirdness in you. Like I love meeting like the weirder you are, the better. I see people and I'm like, oh, I love everything about you. <laughs> like you, I can tell you're confident. I can tell you like yourself. I can tell you're into this and that and the other. Like I can read that who kind of who you are like a preface just because you're just so you Mm -hmm. and those are the people I love to meet and who I want everyone else to feel confident enough to become is their them and I love that that's That's so special about that though is that if we're just talking about photographers okay um it's not like I've done slews of editorial work or anything but I have and I have worked with really expensive what I would say famous on some level photographers okay either been uh, an assistant on what they've done or have done makeup with what they've done. And most really successful, famous photographers uh-huh. have a niche. Yes. And all of their pictures, you can tell it's who theirs. took that picture because it's their dynamic. Yes. Your pictures look like the people you're photographing. <gasps> Thank you. That's and a huge compliment. It is so different. And That's I, what I want. While you're talking, mm-hmm. it was like clicking in my brain all of a sudden where I was like, and, and if I look at them as a collection... You can I tell. can see Charlotte in there. They're consistent. But the but... reason I can see Charlotte is because what I see are those people, you know? Yeah. And th- that is night and day different between yeah. a classically trained... Everything's the same cookie cutter. Right. Yeah. And that I have a look that I like for all my images to come out like. And hopefully you fit, you know? I but your <laughs> stuff is so <laughs> indicative of the people that you're shooting. Yeah. And that's what makes it so special, you I know? know? What I also love about your work, Charlotte. And this was before I had ever even talked to you. I was freshly following you on social media, I think, but you made a post about how, um, this is going to sound morbid, but you're the one who said it. So um, (laughs) I'll say a lot of morbid things. um, No, um, that with your group Mm -hmm. sessions or Mm -hmm. like family portrait Mm -hmm. sessions that you are now starting to, in those group settings, take individual portraits of each person attending because you never know you don't when their last picture It does sound morbid. However, especially in the wake of coronavirus. Yes. I've had clients pass away. Yeah. That is their funeral photo. Yeah. The one they didn't want. Yeah. And I'm all like, dude, what makes you feel like you're not valuable enough to get in front of the camera? What, what is it? And sometimes, and like, if it's a, it's gotta be like a self, like it's the way you look. Is it like, it has to be most of the time it is how they look. 
And I really want to get to the bottom of that. I didn't have wedding photos when I got married. I'm divorced now, but when I got married, (laughs) I, um, you know, like didn't have a wedding photographer, didn't have those things because I didn't feel like I was worth it. I didn't want to spend the money on photos that I would hate of myself because I hated myself. And I didn't know that I hated myself. And um, I just, I didn't value it. And so when I have brides, I do find that occasionally people will come to me and be like, well, I don't think I'm going to do a maternity photo because I just don't feel very good. I look fat and I'm pregnant and I'm miserable. Oh my gosh, I did that too. And now how much have I taken from myself not being in the photographs, not existing in photos? Like, you know, they're going to look for photos for you and those people that love you, whether mm-hmm. it's for your funeral or not, they're going to look for photos of you. My grandmother died yesterday. Do you know how many I photos saw we your have? Post. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we have, we don't have a lot of photos of her and I certainly don't have very many photos of me with her, but that's the first thing you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You start looking for photos like you, it's now like it's going to live in that. And so you deserve to be documented. You deserve to exist. You deserve to exist in time. And no, you may not be famous. You may not ever be remembered or whatever, but the people that love you care deeply for those photos. And um, like, you know, I, when I got married, I didn't value them the same way. I didn't think that way. I had um, a really close friend of mine whose daughter passed away a year ago. And I did take individual portraits of her just because why not? We have some time and some of my favorite photos um, are are just of her and they ended up being her funeral images and this little girl. Yeah. You don't like you would never. And um, I, it was another one of those situations where I was like, what do I do? Like, I can't fix this. I like emotionally feel for her. I have a six year old. They they would have gone to school together just like me and her mother. And um, it, it broke my heart. And so the only thing I could do is say, I'm here for you. And to document it. And she was pregnant at the time. So I did her maternity and I I photographed the funeral. And those photos, it was the eeriest feeling looking up on the stage and seeing life-size portraits of something we had just photographed not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And it is. Like, it's all life and death. Like, photos give give you a part of your soul back. Like, whenever it's been taken. That's what I love about your work is that I see... I see the emotion in your work and in your posts and it just like, I just met you today and I knew five months ago that I wanted to work with you. You know what I mean? Like that it just shows in your work. It shows in your posts. It shows in your social media presence that like, this is deeper than just like a moneymaker for you. Yeah. I don't actually care about money. Money is like the bane of my existence. Like I don't even want to deal with money. And when people like have missed a payment or something, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to talk about this because okay, well, it's my heart that I want to give. And eventually I would like, I know I have all these like plans and all these things I want. Eventually I want to be um, to the point where I can just run a nonprofit And a big part of where my heart lays is with women who've been incarcerated and Mm -hmm. who needs to love themselves more than someone who's been through that. I don't care what you did. I'm here. And like, that's something that I'm really passionate about, uh, giving them back their, who they are, reminding them who they are going to be, um, empowerment. Like that's really where it comes from. And every person, especially women and mothers need to be empowered. Even if you feel like you're the most powerful person tomorrow, you may not. Um, And imagery can do that for some reason. It's kind of magical in that way. It's totally magical. We are going to work on your money mindset right now. Okay. I really do need Because I'm telling you something right now. You are worthy of way more money than you ever realized you were capable of charging first of all I get told that a lot but I'm like I feel bad whenever I like uh, and it's all money mindset stuff it is money mindset okay Mm. money is not the bane of your existence (laughs) money is your birthright girl (laughs) and you are gonna make loads I hope so like I I want to be successful so I can give it like I I want to give 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 but being in service you don't have anything to give yeah but being in service to people the way that you are Money, money doesn't have to be your motivation, Yeah, but you have to be available for it to come to you because you are in service, like we're saying, to people's souls, to yes. their... And girl, take it from someone who wants to work with you. 
they'll pay anything. Yes. Some of them feel you that know? way and some of them don't. And like, it's a lot of well, like, give uh, them my number and I'm going to talk to those people. Them. You be like, you talk to my yes. friend, Jessica. Yes. She, she will like, tell you. Down. She'll tell you yeah. why I'm worth And it's that. so hard to, because it's coming from me. Of course yeah. I think X, Y, Z about it. Mm-hmm. Like I did it. Um, but different people that hire me don't have the same vision of me as you guys do. Yeah. Um, they just like, well, my, you took my friend's pictures and they're good. Next. Like it's very matter of fact they don't understand that it's gonna be an experience right and that's okay but then they become forever it's and also, I get to see them and grow and be yeah. be better, you know? It's also just part of the industry you're in because it's like that in hair and makeup also. Like, people are like, oh, you you want to do my makeup for free. You know, like, people don't yeah, attach yeah. value no. to Jessica, services. You, you know? love doing hair, so don't you want to do my hair for oh. free on your day off? Like, yes. No, I don't. I give away a lot more than people know, yeah. um, especially, like, I have a person I'm going to photograph later this week, and she, I've never met her, but she, I, I, we were just Facebook friends, and she's such a cheerleader for me. And I was like, you know, would you like a boudoir session? You know? And she was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> if someone is a cheerleader, this is somebody, a cheerleader to me is somebody in your business who is on all social media. You know, they say who I need this. And they always comment and they're always saying nice things. Right. And she's never experienced my work. And so I was like, how about we do this? You know? And I'm excited for that. And I want to give those things as much as I can. About once a week, I try to do something like that. And I don't get on there and go, who wants a free? I don't do that. I handpick them who appreciates I think it the gifting most. gifting is different. It's totally, sure. different. totally different. Totally different. But that's a part of how I build my creativity. Yes. That's how yeah. I empower. That's how I put all my fingers all over the community. Yeah. And it, I don't need anything. I just I just want you to feel empowered and you to continue to cheer for me because I'm going to continue to cheer for you. And that is like community. I love that. And investing in your business by showing people what you're capable yes. of, I think is magic. But just in, you know, we were talking about confidence yeah. earlier and how people build their confidence. Value is important, okay? So if I was going to pay you $2,000 to take my pictures, okay, how much more will I love those $2,000 pictures as if I paid $100 for those pictures, you know? And so for me, I'm like, okay, she only charges $100. I'm going to take these pictures and yeah, whatever. Right. But if I decide the photos I need are important enough that I'm going to invest the $2,000 in you to take these photos, I'm going to come at a level to take those pictures that is way more intense, you know? And so the caliber of the product and the quality and the value that it has sometimes is based on how much it costs. I agree. I mean, you, I I think about that way. I don't wear a lot of expensive stuff just because I get weird about it. Like what if I lose it? I'm going to be upset about Mm -hmm. this. So let's just make it cheap. Like everything I have is cheap. Um, just because whatever, unless someone gave it to me, um, and I'm not in the name brands and stuff, but even why I don't wear like, like, rings and stuff I, I'm afraid it's gonna get lost or damaged and then why would I want a twenty thousand yes. dollar something to be damaged like <laughs> please don't get me that like same thing with cars I'm gonna end up having a problem it's like I don't want my whole feeling of life to be into this one thing because of what it's cost but your emotions are in your photography. They yeah. are worth that. They are valuable yeah. to that. Yes. And I feel like some people just don't value photography and that's fine. Like I'm not here to change your mind, but also I'm here to change your mind. But, and like, but also there yeah. are people who do value it. <laughs> there are. And a lot yes. of it, like my dad, um, his mom who'd passed away yesterday, he sent me a picture this morning that he found. And he's like, do you think we could blow this up? Like you did the one of my dad. What I had done is a, there was a cell phone picture my uncle had taken cause they lived 2000 miles away. He texted it to me. I brought into Photoshop, I redigitalized it. I printed a huge canvas for my dad of his father when he passed away a couple years ago. So his mother passed away yesterday and he sent me this photo. Can you do the same thing? And I'm like, absolutely. And this is a man who, are we done with pictures? Why do you have your camera with you? Why are you taking so many photos? Men, especially like, especially in his age range, don't want to be in front of the camera. They think it's vain. They think it's weird. Like, why do you need to do all this? And, um, and so for him to come to me and say, could you do this? That's how he's healing. Yeah. That's how he's healing. Like, and unfortunately, sometimes people do have to pass or something has to happen for people to value it. Um, and it's something I've always deeply cared about. And then whenever Raven happened a year ago, Mm. I was like, wow, I was exactly right. I didn't want to experience this, but here I am. It's going to make me a better photographer because I am looking for that emotion. Like when I photograph moms and children, I, 
I photograph you exactly how I want to be photographed, what I care about, what I value. And I know that time is fleeting and I know that they're never going to be this little again. And I know that all of these cute little things that you may not remember in 10 years, because I have a teenager and I'm sometimes remember, I, I have a hard time remembering some of the things that were super cute that he did. And I wasn't a photographer then. So I don't have a lot of that stuff documented. And the cell phones were different 14 years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I don't, I don't, <laughs> God, have, yeah. I don't have hardly anything in comparison to what I have of my youngest, who's almost seven. Um, just because technology has changed. So and much. Yeah. So I just doing it, just being there. And, like, I don't know. Like, I, I wish I could make un- people understand that it's valuable before it's not in existence anymore. Appreciate what you have right now. It can be taken from you at any moment in time. Yes. Um, th- nobody knows. It could be you. Um, and so like, I joke, I joke around all the time with my close friends. I'm like, if I die, which picture are y'all going to choose? <laughs> These I, are the ones I need. Okay. Is it going to be the one in the I'm cage like, bra and the like, pasties? Because like, yes. which one is it going to be? And I, I'm not, I used to not have photos of me at all. Like yeah. I used to hide from the camera <laughs> and, and I'm like, wow, that's cool. Good luck picking guys. Can you make a collage? <laughs> and a I mean, show, it is like. morbid, but here we are. Like it just is. And life and like, that's a part of that branding thing I was talking about. Mm-hmm. My branding when I see it it's a death skull moth death skull moths are beautiful Mm -hmm. but they're colorful they're soft they're a little creepy and they have a little skull kind of in their fur on the top of them and it's like skulls are life and death and rebirth and growth and change and um that's what I want people to feel when they see the images like I I love being able to grow with these people who like I photograph their engagement and then their wedding and then their maternity and then their baby and like I get to watch them grow I get to watch my work grow I get to watch them grow and Mm -hmm. they value it so much Mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's because they have lost someone Mm -hmm. and that they love very dearly and they know how important it is to document it plus it's fun you get to have pretty art in your home you get to enjoy that and in five years when everything's completely different you're going to look at that photo in a very different way yeah, and always. yeah and like all of these types of parts of your life are, are important for that growth like if I didn't have like I don't have a lot of photos of me from five years ago or before because I hid and so a lot of the times when I do put the pictures up kind of next to each other not in even a weight loss type of way even though it goes like this um it's just uh look at my face look how different I am I can tell in my eyes that I'm a different person oh yeah and I didn't feel valuable at all enough to be documented I didn't take selfies I didn't do stuff like that um just because I'm like why ew like nobody wants to see that that was my inner dialogue um and a lot of the things that have helped me to grow in the last four years where I can see a picture of me and I'm like I'm the same exact weight I'm the same size but look how I dress Mm -hmm. look how I carry myself look how I speak to other people in comparison to being like very shut you know shut in about my feelings just oh okay sorry like I, I've, I've never felt like one of those people that was timid. I've always been kind of, ah, but only when I'm comfortable. And now I'm just like, this is how it is. This is me. This is what we're doing now. And I'm going to grow and I'm going to be different. And I, I invite you guys to do the same. Um, you want to constantly be bettering yourself. I do wake up every day and say, how can I be better? What can I be doing? How can I keep myself on task? Who well, do I, who do I want to be in on five this years? Note. We talked about this a little bit when we were doing the prep for the episode, and we've talked about it a little bit today, that there's a lot of judgment that comes to everyone. Like, everyone deals with judgment that comes at you. Even if you don't know it's happening. I know, right? It's Mm -hmm. happening. But on this show, we're really big on, like, check your own shit, okay? Yeah. And so we all judge Mm -hmm. other people. I don't give a shit who you are. You've looked at someone, and you have judged them for how they look, for what they're wearing, yep. for what you perceive, you, you know, is going on. You don't even know a lot of times. And something that you said that like really hung with me was that when you're doing that, you have to ask yourself, why, why am I judging this person for yeah. that? And that it really is like this uh, internal, like you got to shine a light on it, you know? It's a switch. Yeah. 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 And, and once you um, start kind of, instead of, turn it on yourself. When you start criticizing somebody else, start thinking, well, why, what is it about? that or myself like is it my limitations that I've imposed on myself um you know I used to do it I used to do it all the time and sometimes I still I still do it it. yeah I still I'll be I'll be somewhere and I'm all like oh my gosh and then and I'm immediately like what is it about it 
is it offensive to me? Because I'm hardly ever offended. Like, what is it? What is going on here? Like, why, why do yeah. I not like this? <laughs> and, and I've gotten to the point now yeah. where it almost never happens. And I'm like, if I see somebody, like I said, I like weird people and, I, and they're, <laughs> they're out of their box or like in comparison to the rest of the world, like you think they're super different and strange or whatever. I'm immediately like, yes. Like, <laughs> and I've, I've reprogrammed that part of me. And so like, that's part of when I, when I go to places and I know that none of them are thinking the same way I do, they're judging me. They're definitely judging me. I can see it in their eyes. I can see, I can read, I know what you're thinking, or I don't even know what you're thinking, but I can tell it's not good. Um, and <laughs> I'm just, it. I just have to be okay with that. And I, I am, and I'll, I'll think whatever. Um, I'm just going to continue doing whatever I want. And if you don't like it, you can go away. Um, and you have to constantly be having that battle between yourself and the rest of the world. Like, uh, and, and it has so much more to do with who you are and how you, you know, portray yourself to the world than it does that person. You're never going to see them again, probably. And if you do, guess what? You will remember them Mm -hmm. and whether or not it's good or bad is up to you and it, even if someone looks like not i'm not even talking about like being provocative i mean just someone who doesn't look like what you think they should well or like yeah. in the beauty business like i'll judge people's eyebrows oh that's a good i one. will judge your hair your highlight yeah. placement i will yeah. judge you know like and maybe that's because that's the industry I work in. And so that's I'm just comparing, you know, like it's, so it's my critical eye that's yep. looking at it, you know, like I do people's that's makeup in do. my head. Yeah. Um, it's a part of how you become better is, is by criticizing. It's, However, yeah, it's still judgment though. It is judgment. And it's still, um, and since we've had that conversation, I hear, and I probably don't do it in real life as much as I do it on television. You know, like I'm judging people on TV that I don't know. Yeah, they don't count. Um, <laughs> but it's so funny that now that it's been made aware to me, I think about it all the time. Yes. And I'm like, Laurie, mm -hmm. why are you judging that girl? Like, you don't know that she, uh, you, don't, you know. don't know. Not only that, but you don't know what kind of day she's having. No, yeah. and I don't know why her like, eyebrows are like that. She may like them like that. And she, that is not I up just, to me. Like, I see it stuff is, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's who they are right now. And that doesn't mean they're not valuable. It doesn't right. mean they're not worthy. I, I have had people come to me for photos and I'm just like, wow, this is, wow, this is different than what I'm used to. <laughs> um, but they still deserve encouragement. They still deserve to feel their best. Right, they yeah. still deserve to, to feel excited about this, even if it's not something I agree with. And like, why? Is it because somebody made fun of me? Or is it really just bad? And well, and me sending that vibe out there is not helpful to them no, in any way, yourself. shape, or, or me. Yeah, because, like yeah. that it's yeah. painful on both ends. And yes. that it's so much more useful for you to send the love, the acceptance. Yes. That, you know, like, like everyone that Everyone needs a little bit more of that. Totally. Everyone needs grace. Mm -hmm. And every day people are in different parts of their lives and you don't know what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And it may be they always look like this, but today you saw this. And I'm guilty of that. Like there's people, I've gone to the same place and then I've gone in looking a certain way and then I don't get ID'd for whatever. I, I, I'm like, they just treat me differently. And then I'll go in and they ID me. I look different or whatever. Or I'll even say, oh, like the other day when we saw blah and they're like, oh, that wasn't you, was it? And I'm like, yeah, it was, I'm the same person. <laughs> Literally um, the same. <laughs> yeah. And if, just if you were going to talk to me this day, but not this day, then why? Like, I'm the same. And that's probably one of my favorite things to do is to is to show people like you can do it all and you don't have to be here to please anybody aesthetically. That's not your purpose. You don't have to be into hair and makeup. You don't have to wear lingerie if you want to shoot boudoir. Like there's so many other ways to be who you are. Who yeah. is that? Let's figure out who that is. What do you like? I just shot um, a boudoir the other day. She did um, like a Charlie Chaplin vibe. Saw it. So amazing. It was awesome. She even said, I kind of look like a boy. And I was like, you that do. That was the coolest part I was of like, it. I really was. Yeah. I was like, but you kind of like do. It's so cool. super sexy and androgynous. Yes. And she's like, a grandmother. Oh my gosh. She Stop. looked amazing. She? Yes. Yeah. She's a grandma. She's a Capricorn. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, and she's a grandma. Oh and God. yeah. And she, I, she works at Walmart. Would she never. Looked, ever I thought she was like a high fashion assumption. runway For model real. or something. And and, like. I, and yeah, and we she had hair and makeup done yeah. professionally, yeah. and she came in, and it was very different. And she and I even made like a before and after. She was wearing Spider Man outfit, and then her after photo was very like classy and pretty. And she sent me all of this like type of inspiration that was like old like 1920s 1930s like black and white so like silhouettes and like the top hats and all sorts of things I'm and i thought 
okay, this, I don't know what this is going to look like, but I'm excited because it's different yeah. and it's her. And so, you know, she had the white shirt and the suspenders and the bow tie and pants. And we threw on the hat with the angel wings. Like, I don't know. I brought the angel wings because just she was case. like, I'm interested. I had just <laughs> made them. And, and so I was like, what do you think about putting this together? And to have like all of these different types of people in the angel rings, because the angel wings are fun and mm, they're pretty yeah. and they're dreamy. But I put a man with like, bondage straps all over a minute that looked amazing her in it with her charlie chaplin it's worked on so many people like oh my god across the board looks amazing in whatever setting you put i'm just like put these on (laughs) (laughs) like you don't you want to wear these yeah Yeah. (laughs) like and like let it happen and i've gotten to wear them with all sorts of different outfits already and they look different with all of them and that's a part of the creativity is like letting yourself out of that box like who told you to get in that box Mm -hmm. who says well you don't really wear the angel wings with that type of shirt i had some photographers say that when I posted them in some of the groups and I'm all like you missing the point you don't do it but like, I do what that, I want like. but and a lot of other people <laughs> yeah. were like wow and I'm like it's a risk yeah. you have to yeah. take that risk mm-hmm. and you have to take it creatively and you have to take it within who you are because it represents who you are and like your work and things like that especially for me but it works that same way with individuals who aren't like creatives like it's 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 you it's your style who are you like don't be afraid to come out of that box because if you put yourself you know in that box no one's going to come and liberate you from it unless you want to get out right and the 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 hardest part about it is is actually getting out of it like going like going just, there it's hard like you know don't be afraid of what other people are going to think she certainly didn't like Girl, wow no kidding those and that makes photos me happy. y'all it makes Ugh. me happy when you did your shoot with your friends in the angel wings I mean, I was looking at them at home on the couch and I told my husband, I was like, I'm about to get naked and yes. run around downtown Fort Worth while Charlotte takes my pictures because I, these are so amazing. At the like, post office. I know they were great. And they literally were literally in front of the, the post, post office, office in Fort Worth. And I was like, this chick has her tits hanging out. Yeah, I mean, like, I do. I had on pasties. Pasties, but yes. were but honking and all sorts of I'm things. Sure were, and I was just like, hello. <laughs> At one point, the fire trucks, we could hear them going down (laughs) Lancaster. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they're coming for me because I'm so hot. (laughs) And I'm like, no one cares. Like, that's cold out here. It's so windy. It was ripping pieces of the feathers off. (laughs) And, like, we rocked it. But the photos are I'll do that when it gets warmer outside. Yes. (laughs) I'm not going to do that. I have had people inquire about something like that. Where were these? And I'm like, they're totally on Lancaster. So if you decide to wear anything boudoir with them, you will be out with the public people. You're going to have to learn to deal with that. I had... I go to all sorts of different things and I work with all sorts of different types of people and I, I will go to events where they like, like the raves. I I've had practice putting something on doubting myself and going out anyway. And I don't always get good the whole time I'm out, mm-hmm. but I did have a lot of people coming up to me and saying, I love this. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I'm like, good. It was for you. It was for you. Right. It was for me, but it was for you and for you. And then the people that are like, Oh, are you allowed to do that? Yeah, I can. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I've had people. It's I had, free will, you know, yeah, like, it's the way it works. like it's all about like your comfort zone. Other people are dressed like this. Why am I not allowed to? Why is it because? I'm this size and shape is it not something you like like let's get into the philosophy of why you think I shouldn't be allowed to well, do this when you were talking about the shorts earlier yeah and you know that chick made the comment from across the room I'm like it's Texas and it's fucking hot right. where the shorts like, yeah. <laughs> or know, my, like, the other one is um I can't wear this like I'll have stuff like this or whatever in my client closet and it'll have sleeveless and I have a lot of women who are like my arms and I'm just like girlfriend I will literally pick my arm up and flap it and show you I <laughs> wave twice and I wear tank tops like it does not matter it's 112 degrees we are in Texas you need to be comfortable right yeah. and and part of being comfortable is being comfortable enough in, in your body and who you are to be able to put whatever is actually comfortable for today's weather on it yeah. and not worry about what you're the, like a lot of people deal with like the family things in the back of their head. They hear their mom or their grandma, um, Mm. that grandmother that passed away yesterday. I was talking to my cousin who's 10 years younger than me. Um, and she said when she said, yeah, she was not, we didn't have a great relationship and you know, whatever. And, and she said that I'll never forget her telling me if you don't quit eating that, you're going to get fat like your mother. (gasps) Okay. And I was like, wow. And I've had, I've had stuff like, especially when it's from your grandmother and, um, and I was like, wow, moving across the country, 2000 miles away from someone like that. 
Like it's maybe, maybe it spared me in some way. And this person, my cousin, she's so beautiful. She is like this big around long donder, butt, blonde hair. Like she looks very beach body and she's gorgeous. And I just can't imagine someone, especially our grandmother saying something like that to her. And, um, it hurt me for her because I had my other grandmother on the other side say things like, well, if you had stood with your legs like this together, you would look smaller Stuff like that. And that's a part of the fixing your inner dialogue. And because you still hear those things. And sometimes those things that you can't unhear, they've lived there for so long. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to pull that out of that box. Get out of that. Stop telling yourself that's the truth. And even if it is the truth, like, what does that matter? I wonder what that generational thing is. Because I find that a lot with older generations, Mm -hmm. middle-aged and older probably, that they're very body conscious and really don't have a problem with talking about you know what it is it's that 1950s like it's what everything is thing. you and i were talking about this last night the patriarchy the fucking patriarchy I dude like that. i'm telling you we have been I, conditioned I was, yes laurie yes. and i were talking the other night about um i don't even God, know what it was we don't even we don't want to come on the podcast and sound like these feminists that are like fuck the patriarchy but seriously seriously? like it is what it is and that's a big part of what i fight against and even in um like the gay community i photograph gay men and transgender human beings and um they have a lot of other things they have to deal with Mm -hmm. on top of it yeah and um they sometimes like they a lot of them come off a lot more confident than they really are and they need just as much help as everybody else and like people just need more permission to be themselves and a lot of the stuff that we have been taught in our brain it lives there forever and it hurt more because it came from a certain person yeah. and you have to drown that out with other good things and know that whoever it came from has their own trauma yes. that forced them to go right, there with like you like it's not that she that. doesn't right. love you that's the it, first right. thing yes. i always think of when someone's being awful to me i'm like who hurt you yeah that they are just expressing their you? own pain yeah, yeah. Right. and yeah. if you can turn that dialogue in your brain around like i'm not like you definitely need to check yourself and like make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing but when someone says something awful to you especially unsolicited or, or something like that and i i get it like they want they want you to not experience maybe what they think you're going to experience. And so they're trying to save you. They love you so much. They're trying to save you, but that's not how you do it. And it works the same way. Like if you don't fix that inner dialogue for yourself, you're going to carry that to your children. And then your children are going to say other things to other people. Like it it really is. It it trickles down. And so like (sighs) becoming a whole person and being happy with that person and all of these different aspects really can affect your relationships and your parenting and your grandparenting. Like, why do I remember that from when I was 11 or 12 years old? It's because I was like, oh, nobody's ever said anything like that to me. Mm-hmm. And then you deal with it. You bring it around the rest of your life. And then you see your daughter and you're like, well, if you didn't wear that, da, 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 da. I'm, I'm almost 35 years old. I go to pick up my kids from my mom's house every once in a while when she keeps them. And she'll still look at me up and down clothes I'm wearing. She will still judge me because she is not there. She doesn't want to be there. That's not something that's important to her. She doesn't care. Um, and so, you know, it's a judgment thing. And I think a lot of it comes from like, she's the sweetest lady, but she doesn't want me to project this type of image or because she knows people will think this, this, and this. And Mm -hmm. it's like, that's not my responsibility. Like I'm going to continue to be me you and that they can think what they need to think, but that's their own problem. And I'm not here to fix that for them. Like I'm here, like I, if you're open and you want to be like better and do better, have better and, and, and whatever, then let's do that. But I'm, I'm, I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to impress anyone. I don't pretty is not the rent I live to pay in this world. And oh, people, yeah, people's opinions of me are not how I pay my bills. In fact, the people that do pay my bills are the ones who love what I do yeah. and how I do mm-hmm. it. So why would I change that? I, and, but it did take a lot of bravery to put myself in, in that position. And uh, like when I had the picture of my butt go viral, my mm-hmm. naked butt, it was a body positivity campaign a few years ago. And um, the photos I just took of the beautiful black woman and the angel wings, oh my she's gosh, actually, she's, she's, she's the one that photographed me. She's, that's her photo of me. Uh-huh. Um, and it was a big body positivity campaign and we didn't mean for it to go viral cause you can never plan that stuff. You can nope. try to, but you can't actually plan it. Um, algorithms exist. So she put that out there and I read, a th- I've read thousands of comments about my naked body. Oh my gosh. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to, to 
you know, I, I wanted it. I didn't know it would be viral. Once it went viral, all the criticism start rolling in and I could just read you a list of all the things people have said about my body yet. I'm still doing me. And it's because I can just like the girl with the shorts comment, just like this person, you're sending me fuel to fire, get bigger, 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 bigger until I billow in your face. And <laughs> I am just not willing to change like that. I'm not going to let one person's comment or thousands of comments change the point of the art, change who I am, take it down. Can you imagine No. The, how many people would have gone not inspired, not feeling seen like your body. A lot, some of the comments were, I feel represented. Like I I've never seen a body like mine, like this. And I, I feel this way and this way, but there were 10 more that say, Oh, needs to go on a diet, diabetes, uh, like asphalt, but like, I don't even know. Like it's the, <laughs> some of the most ridiculous things, some of them, but I had to have a, an outer shell that was, that was tough enough to be able to endure those types of things. That is a part of putting yourself out there. You know what this is like? What? Seth Rogen. I love Seth Rogen. This is totally <laughs> like Seth Rogen. Seth okay. Rogen. So this when was, was this, this was, this is when like Black Lives Matter was like this was the thicket of the salon oh, being shut I down. And Did you see that on Instagram? Yes. He was yeah, like, like, "Screw you guys!" <laughs> he really <laughs> like anytime someone would comment, I was laughing. I was screenshotting He's hilarious all these comments to Laurie, and I was like, "Check out Seth Rogen's Instagram right now!" Yeah, because he was like, "If you don't agree that Black Lives Matter." Fuck, fuck you. you. He was telling people, he like, then, go fuck your dad. Like, yeah, like he was <laughs> saying some weird shit. And I was like, get him, Seth. I know. And that is how I feel. Like, I actually had somebody comment. I have a, a TikTok I posted a couple of days ago of Bria and her husband, yes. the maternity. And um, it was just a 15 second TikTok. And it has 51,000 something views on it right now. And it has for like 4,000 likes. And I had someone comment this morning and they said, um, I think that you're just posting these interracial couples to get uh, likes. And I was like, oh. Oh. I think they just didn't understand that <laughs> that wasn't me and that nobody else is right. either because it's like, right. it's just, it's the photo babe. I don't know. So I think they misunderstood what it, what was happening yeah. on my TikTok and it can get confusing because there's all sorts of different people on there. <laughs> but I thought I commented and I was just like, do not even play with me. I photograph all humans. I don't care about any of this other stuff. Like, please don't say sideways stuff to me. I'm a portrait photographer. You can check out the rest of my work here, here and here. And I, I was just immediately like, oh, hell no. And if you don't like it, don't go away. Don't like, yeah, nobody's forcing you here. Like, that's my favorite thing to tell people. Just please leave. Like, I'm not doing this right now. <laughs> I don't have a problem. Like, I used, that's part of the confidence. I used to just take people's criticism. I would not only take it without any anything to say for myself and I would just be like oh and it would eat oh, me I'm up sorry. inside yeah. yeah and like even if I'm not sorry I had to have that talk with myself a lot am I sorry because a lot of people okay. that have lived with a lot of shame they're constantly apologizing Always. yeah and I'm just like but am I I'm not actually sorry. So why did I say why that? Do I like, yeah. Why do I why feel I like I'm, I'm supposed sorry? to feel bad about this? Yeah. Because you don't approve. And also, who are you? Like, <laughs> I mean, you go do whatever you want to. I don't care. I'm not here to criticize you. It's, I just will keep it to myself. Seth Rogen is definitely like that. He, well, because there was not that just meme being... that came out that, like, I envision every time I'm dealing with criticism. It was like... Seth Rogen's head on like a uh, gladiator's body yes. and he had this sword and it was like all these like the meme had like all these comments around it like black lives don't matter whatever it was I don't know and the sword's like fuck you you know yes. like yes he doesn't I even mean, care he doesn't care and, and Laurie and I way. talk about it like be the Seth Rogen. Well, and I told you know, him he's more aggressive than I. He's am. the goal, yes, though. but he aggressive. is goals. Like the goal <laughs> is mind telling you. that I can tell you to fuck off as many times as I want to on my Instagram or my Twitter, and I'm still uber famous and making millions right. of dollars. It doesn't, <laughs> matter. <laughs> that it doesn't matter. That's the goal. Yeah, that like, is the yeah, goal. Totally. And I mean, I appreciate that because he gets to support. Like, it's important for white men specifically yes. to be that person because a pe you know he also is well respected in yeah, what he does, yeah, totally. and he's a comedian. Da, 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 da. So there are a lot of white straight cis men who will listen to him or maybe a light bulb came on and said huh 
Black Lives Matter? Like, why does Seth Rogen care about yeah, this? Yeah, maybe I should think okay. about this. So that's a, like, yes, use that and, like, empower, like, do what you know is correct and, like, be in the world and do it unapologetically, okay. even if you're not Seth Rogen. And it's hard because a lot of people have this, uh, like, this persona that they feel they need to live up to because it pleases this person or this person, or they're afraid that this will happen. And so they're not putting themselves out there. They're not just saying, this is what I think. And I've had people say, oh, you Black Lives Matter or whatever, or you photograph gay people. <laughs> or my favorite is, um, you can't take our family pictures because I can't have boudoir pictures, na naked people pictures next to my family photos. Mm. Oh, and I'm like, well, is that right? That's okay. They're not going to, and like, please don't hire me. Like, please don't. Because, uh, There's I, lots of I will too. defend every single person to the death. Um, I don't know if you've done the, uh, the Myers Briggs personality test, but a long time ago. I'm the same as Martin Luther King, which is the advocate. I will yeah. fight for you. And I've never been in a fist fight, but I will have some choice <laughs> like, words. But I will. I'll I will like I will defend you. Like if you put yourself out there, I'm here to support you. Like I'm proud of you. I don't care if I even agree with it. You like as long as you're not being a, a crappy person, like you know, if, if this is a brave thing for you, then I'm gonna be here to support you. And whether that's photography or this type of shoot, but you're not gonna get to like not be in the same place as other people I photographed. You're not better. Mm -hmm. And nudity doesn't make them wrong. And nudity doesn't make you look different. And like, like you're, you're naked under your clothes right now. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I know you have sex. I know you have kids. Mm -hmm. I know, I, like, I know all these things about you. So stop bullshitting right. and, and figure out what makes you so unhappy about how other people do things. Because that is another part of that inner dialogue where you're like, why does this upset me? Why? Yeah. Why? What, make, what, what difference well, does this make like, to me? At the end of the day, like, I'm, when I look at um, social media and I see, like, a semi-nude Kim Kardashian versus like let's say a muslim woman completely covered up they're both beautiful in like such different they're ways they're totally different that like nude and hanging out there kim kardashian i think is empowering but also like a completely covered woman no matter what the religious background what, that doesn't whatever. matter yeah. i'm just saying like all of it that there's beauty and modesty mm -hmm. there's there beauty is beauty and nudity yes there's and, beauty anywhere and that all things. bodies are good bodies yeah, right. and like different things empower different people yes for me it was nudity because i i've been made fun of for my body in different parts of it my entire life um something that was really liberating for me was in austin there's a place called hippie hollow and oh. you can go to a nude beach down there in austin oh, and, and it's 18 and up you got to be 18 Thank God it's a day away. Um, and you, you have to be brave. Like if you've never, like if I had never posed for my boudoir stuff up leading up to that, if I had never done those things that scared me, that would have been not an option for me. And I would have missed out. And I actually went and I laid on a rock in the middle of the water and took nude photos. And I wrote all sorts of beautiful words about it because that's my body. It has served me. It's my vessel. It's my meat armor carcass situation <laughs> and this is what I've been given yeah. and I don't get to change it and every single person has to deal with that that's a reality we all have to to take and it's really a big one for some people because they've already been fed all of this dumb information about themselves that mm. may not be true but like I I've dealt with some birth trauma and I have almost died before giving birth and having a c-section and and I've, I have, I have scars and I have this and I have stretch marks and I have all these things that would keep a normal, a person like this from typically going and enjoying that. And I'll tell you right now, I was the only big girl there naked. And I have people like, people are going to look, they're going to leave you alone. They have lots of security. They don't play around there. However, like I knew people were looking and like, are they, do they like it? Do they not like it? Like you can, you have all these thoughts, mm -hmm. but having like for me when I wrote that I was like this is my body this is my trauma this is this is liberating to me because I have laid there like almost dead and been there to where I had no control over what was happening to my body I didn't get to make my own choices and um so you know I'm past that I'm healed but my body still reflects some of those choices that I didn't even get to make and a lot of women with a lot of abuse or things like that also have to undo those things and a lot of the inner work we talk about is 
identifying those things that live within us yeah. to be able to get them out. If, if they stay in there forever and you don't have a way to healthfully release these things, they, they do bottle up and, and they make you kind of a miserable human, even if other people don't think you're miserable yeah. because you live with your inner thoughts. You yeah. live with that inner dialogue where you are being critical of yourself. And so like nudity is liberating for me. It isn't for everyone. And I'm very open to people that are like, I kind of don't want to do anything like that. I really want to be more like, cool, let's do that. That's what is good for you. Like I'm yeah. here to do whatever is in your comfort zone. I'm not here to force you to change. I'm not here to grow you, to make you different without your consent. Like I'm not here to force your hand. I'm here to facilitate your dreams and to give you something that's beautiful, which is you. And if this looks like this to you, then that's what we'll do. And I have people that tell me, oh, I don't think I could do that. And I just am like, but why? So I hear you want to, but you're afraid. Right. What is it about it? Is it this, that, and the other, or is it this? And let, let's talk about it. Whereas when I started doing photography, especially boudoir, people would say, oh, I don't like this, or I hate this part of my da da da. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, me too. Like, that was my answer. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so now I'm just like, why? You know, let's yeah. talk about it. And like, I'm not, do you Photoshop this? That's the number one question. Nope. I actually don't use a lot of Photoshop on purpose. I'm not here to change you into a different human being. Whoever loves you already loves you the way you are. And I wish you would do it too. And so, I mean, it, it is, it can be super liberating. And I think that's a big reason why I love photography. You can continue to liberate yourself as much as you want, like as many times as you want. Totally. Like, yeah. and that's, I have access to that. Just like you guys with your hair and makeup, you can, you know exactly what to do. So you can make yourself do whatever you want. You have that ability. So I do that with my photography. Um, I just continue to, to try something new, do something different, things that make me uncomfortable. Like um, it's, it's fun for me at this point, whereas it didn't used to be. Um, it takes a lot of courage. And after reading all those thousands of comments about my naked body, I could have been like, oh, never again. After hearing that person when I was leaving the restaurant, ew, you're sharks. Like I could just have gone home and cried and been like, never again. But what did I do with it instead? And that is how you become confident mm -hmm. is talking to yourself about these things, having that inner dialogue, being able to pinpoint where did this come from? Where is it going? How is it affecting me? How did it affect me? And then watch your growth. And it, it's not something where you wake up and you're like, I'm confident today. Like yeah. that does not no. exist. It's a journey. It does not exist. I wish I could give a like gift that to people. That's one of the biggest things. I'm like, I wish I could just give you a piece of it. Like, well, we're going to work on that. Yes. Yeah. I want to be able to do that. And that is a big part of how I do things, but I'm, I'm very like chill. I, I read you. I let this happen. I'm, I'm not here to force it because forcing it's never going to make it fixed. It's like, not going to make a good photo. You can't change yeah. somebody's yeah. mind by just being like, you will do this. Like, oh my gosh, that won't work. It has to come from within themselves. All I can do is encourage it. All I can do is facilitate it and give them the tools. And it doesn't always have to do with photography. I have had some photo sessions where we talked for an hour and we took pictures for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Because they need to have that talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I'm the person to talk to. Well, this is why you're a gift to Aww, everybody right. who gets to take photos Thank with you. you. We are so excited to shoot with you at the end of this month. Um, you'll see pictures of Yeah, us. you'll see new stuff. Wait. I cannot wait. We are going to so tag fun. all of Charlotte's luck, social medias so and Instagrams. I know it's going to be like a mile long, um, so but many. honestly, I've, she's one of the most fun people to follow. I you guys are going to love it. I to keep it like in different groups, mostly just because it's easier to say, because if you're a maternity, for, for you know, you want maternity photos, you don't want to go look at all of these Girl, photos. your branding is on point. Thank okay, you. like the photo babe thing for all of your different aspects it's that it's was so a good i love thing it. for me too it's great like to do the photo babe because you have to own it then yeah. I'm like oh my gosh if i'm the photo you babe, are. I, have I have to, to own be it. the I photo babe, babe. Yeah. so whenever i made that name for myself i was just kind of like am i the photo babe <laughs> and right. i thought fuck it i am the photo babe oh, like <laughs> eh. and some days i'm like i'm not the photo babe today <laughs> and other days i'm like oh of course i am and it's become like a part of who i am i love having an alias um, but it's, it's, it's liberating for me on well, all these working, different ways. Yeah. It's, it's working totally girl. Working. Um, you. guys, if we said anything today, talked about anything today that like flipped your trigger, if it made you really happy, if it inspired you, if it pissed you off, we need you to tell us. Okay. So like get on Let the comments, <laughs> lay it on us. These, um, 
volatile conversations where people swing, you know, one end of the spectrum to the other is kind of why we're in this whole Badass Ladies Club podcast thing is to get it out and talk about it. And we know that that's where the magic is happening. So uh, give us all the likes and the comments and the subscriptions. Thanks so much for being here today and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.